Hello everyone, my name is Ian, you're watching Big Rock Moto, and thank you so much for tuning in today. So over the years, I've been lucky to own many different dual sport bikes of all different shapes and flavors and brands. I've had DRZ 400s, I've had WR250Rs, I've had a DR650, I've had the KLR650, I've had a KTM 525 EXC, I've had two different 500 EXCs, you get the point, I've had a lot of different dual sport bikes. So one, about a year ago, I bought this bike. This is a Beta 500 RRS model year 2017. So why did I buy this Beta? Well, I do enjoy dual sport and enduro riding, um, and there's a lot of places that I just don't wanna take my big heavy adventure bikes. And so this absolutely fits the bill uh, for that type of riding. And I bought the Beta because I'd never owned a Beta and I wanted to try something different from the usual KTM. So here's what you can expect in today's video. Here's how I'll break this down. I'm gonna talk about why I bought this bike. We're gonna talk about what I like about the bike, what I don't like about the bike, and would I buy a Beta again? And it's really gonna be that simple. It's not gonna be as long and complicated as most of my bike reviews. So let's start by talking about why did I choose to purchase a Beta dual sport bike? So like I mentioned, I've owned a lot of the other bikes and the most recent KTM I owned, which was a late model 500 EXC, there, were, there was one big thing that I, that I was really frustrated with on the KTM, which was the fueling and how the bike ran. It liked to what they call flame out and stall at low throttle openings, and it just didn't have uh, appropriate fuel mapping. Now, there's ways to fix that, which involves basically spending thousands of dollars on aftermarket modifications, which I thought was kind of silly. So anyway, after I was done with that bike and moved on, uh, I started looking at the Beta. So the reasons that I chose the Beta was one, because I never had it before, but also, I mean, you've got a very powerful engine. I think it's around 45, 50 horsepower, somewhere in there. You've got a six speed transmission. You've got really good suspension. It's super light. It's around 250, maybe 260 pounds. So maybe a smidge heavier than the, than the latest model KTMs, but still very, very light. And the newest betas are even lighter than this. I also really like the way it looks, the aesthetics. I admit that's vain and stupid or whatever, but I really think it's cool with the red and the white and the blue color scheme. I think it looks really, really sharp. So what are the things that I love most after owning the Beta for the past year? The number one thing that stands out to me is the way the bike fuels, the fueling and the throttle control and how smooth the power comes on. So the bike comes with a map switch. It comes with a soft throttle response and a more aggressive throttle response. I usually run it in the soft throttle response uh, because I find it's more progressive. But going deeper into this, what I like is that it doesn't stall, it doesn't flame out, it runs smooth at all RPMs, and in technical slow speed riding, uh, where you're on you know, steep hills and rocks and challenging single track and situations like that, the bike has very good control and allows you to remain in control instead of you know stalling and falling over or having those flame outs, which a lot of the other bikes, including the Honda 450L and the KTM have. Now I know, yes, you can fix that on those bikes, but this bike, it doesn't have that problem. I don't know if the, new, the brand new Betas with the redesign are the same way, but for this generation, I can say it's very, very good. And it's the number one thing that stands out, allowing me to ride the bike in those technical situations uh, and feel very much in control and have a lot of confidence. Uh, the other things I like about the bike, the suspension is very, very good for a stock suspension. Um, I'm around 190 pounds and it works well for me. I think if you're over that weight, you might need to get a respring and a revalve. I find it to be on par with bikes like the KTM EXC. Um, it does use a linkage suspension like the Huskies do and not unlike the KTM with the PDS. Um, I can't tell too much difference between the PDS and the linkage system like this, but um, all I know is that the bike responds, it handles well, it soaks up the terrain well. I'm not riding at a race pace like in Baja or something like that, going 100 miles an hour through the desert. But for the riding I do, I like the suspension. The transmission shifts smoothly. The six speed is a wide ratio, so you have really good gearing. Uh, I'm using a 13 tooth front sprocket and I believe the back is a 48. So I think I'm running 1348. I think it comes with a 1448, but I, they also give you a 13 in the box. So I put it down to the 13 for a use on tighter trails. I can still cruise at 60 miles an hour on the road without being too buzzed out, but I have a really good low first gear for uh, trail use. 
Another thing I really love about the Beta is they give you for this price, which is a, makes it a really good value, the Trailtech Voyager dashboard. So it's a G integrated GPS. It has all sorts of readouts. You get a tachometer, uh, you get all sorts of uh, riding information, altitude, uh, all sorts of settings in there. You can use a GPS track, although it's very rudimentary. Um, but you get a lot more information on that display than you get with a very basic little one-line uh, KTM or Husky dashboard, which just gives you basically like your miles per hour and maybe a trip meter and an hour meter. You get a lot more with this for this price and I think that's a great, great inclusion. Now, of course, you can go put that on any bike you want and they have a newer pro version, which is better. And I think it has a color screen, but the fact that it comes with that was a big bonus and saved me a lot of money from having to upgrade to a system like that. So what are the things I don't like about the beta? Well, there's very little that I can really honestly find to complain about. Uh, one thing is that there are less beta dealers. So there's less, um, there's less, if you're on the road, if you're traveling in remote parts of the world or whatever, uh, you might not want the beta just because there's less dealerships, which means there's less parts availability. If you get into a bad situation, there's less support for the bike. But I will say the customer experience that I've seen with Beta seems to be very, very good and responsive, uh, unlike my experience with KTM and Husky in the past. Another thing that I don't love about this bike is I, I don't know if there's something wrong with my particular bike. I don't think so, because it runs perfectly and doesn't use any oil and doesn't make any weird noises and it has low hours. But I feel like it's not as powerful as a 500 EXC from KTM. I don't know why that is. It could be you know, anything to do with gearing, tires, how I have it tuned. Maybe it needs fuel mapping, maybe it needs, I, I don't know. But it doesn't seem in open areas like through the desert quite as punchy as the KTM 500 motor. But it's a more tractable power. It's better down low. It doesn't have those stalling flame out issues which we mentioned. So I'm very happy with the motor. It has plenty of power for me. You can get up to 60, 70 miles an hour very quickly. It just doesn't feel quite as punchy or as torquey as that 500 motor that KTM has. So I guess the big question at the end of the day is since I've owned all these different dual sport bikes, would I buy the Beta again? And my answer is absolutely 100% yes. I really can't find anything to really fault significantly about the bike. I've had a good ownership experience. Nothing's gone wrong with it in the year I've owned it. Um, I will say there's a few uh, design issues on this generation. They had like a plastic, I think it was a water pump gear, and this bike had that replaced with the steel gear. So that's a preventative maintenance thing you do to prevent that from breaking. Also, I think it was the regulator rectifier, the part electrical component that, monitor, that uh, manages the voltage. I think that was defective on these bikes. And so there was something with that and maybe some wiring that was replaced under warranty as some kind of a recall or bulletin from Beta. So that's all been taken care of by the previous owner. But just beware if you're buying one of these used to make sure that it's had the steel water pump gear and the electrical system issues sorted out. Those are the only two things that I know of that could potentially uh, leave you stranded on this bike. So check into those things. And I'm not sure if the newest betas have those issues or not. So you need to do your own research on that. So would I buy this again? Yes, it serves all my needs as a dual sport enduro bike. I love it, have no complaints about it, and I would strongly consider, and I am strongly considering, buying a brand new Beta just to test out the latest and lightest generation from Beta. They seem like a great company who builds a great product and really stands behind it, so I'd be happy to buy another one and kind of have a new project to play with. So uh, if you have questions, comments, concerns, put them down in the comments below. I'll make sure to follow up. Otherwise, please support Big Rock Moto. Uh, buy your riding gear and parts with my links all below. Uh, consider supporting me on Patreon. Always leave a thumbs up, subscribe, do all those sorts of things. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Please ride safe out there on the trails, and I'll see you out there. The back end steps out very predictably. Of course, that's going to also depend on what kind of tires you run.